Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at the InfoBlock stand at Black Hat 2024 in Las Vegas. I'm with Dr. Renee Burton. Uh, you are the VP of Threat Intelligence at InfoBlox. Yep. Uh, talk a little bit about what that role is and what, what that encompasses. Yeah, so I run InfoBlox Threat Intel, and the purpose of our group is to find all the bad things on the internet that go into our DNS firewall product. So we're particularly looking for suspicious and malicious domain names in, in particular. Yeah, now uh, most security companies have a threat intelligence unit inside them. Um, yours is somewhat unique because you use DNS data. Yeah. And uh, so tell me, why is that important? Yeah, so DNS as a control point within that security stack, it is both a cursing and a blessing, right? It is so powerful because it's the first way in which a threat actor communication is gonna happen. But at the same time, it is critical for your infrastructure to run. So if you are not specialists in the area, then you are more likely to have a problem if you're blocking things in DNS. So what our differentiation is, is one, we are acting, we are using that powerful control point, but we're doing it in a way that's very tailored, very focused on DNS, so that we can see things that don't get seen elsewhere in the security stack. Yeah, so most security companies, when I think of the threat intelligence group, they're pulling a lot of telemetry of the internal firewalls, the internal EDR systems, things like that. Exactly. Uh, but you're actually able to see things that are more outside and things that maybe haven't hit an enterprise yet, but possibly could. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so you're really almost like an early warning system in some ways. Right, yeah, and you yeah. also see the things that are facilitating crime. So traffic distribution systems in particular, something that you don't see at all elsewhere in the security stack, those are the people who are brokering for various different cyber criminals. And you can only see that in DNS and you best see it when you kind of look yeah. back. Yeah, and it's one of the few network services that everybody runs. You right? have so, to run yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Again, not, yeah. <laughs> now I know you've had some really interesting, a uh, couple of really interesting discoveries lately. Uh, one of them is uh, Vigorous Viper, which I guess is this little guy here, right? Yeah, this is yeah. the Vigorous Viper yeah. guy. And uh, so what did that tell you? So Vigorous Viper is a, a fascinating kind of complex story that that brings together cyber crime with real world like physical crime of human trafficking and money laundering. Vigorous, it stands for, it's a mafia term and it's like an exorbitant uh, fee that you put on someone who's lost. And what they're doing is they're running a scheme, essentially, that comes through European football teams through sponsorships that goes back into China. They hook people in. They also engage in these kind of pyramid schemes, human human trafficking, and pig butchering, which is a really common investment scam. That's all happening from these kind of enterprises. Yeah, and so in that case, some of the clubs, they didn't, well, all, they weren't even aware that was happening, right? The, no, I mean, yeah. they're, they're entering into sponsorship yeah. deals without knowing who they're entering yeah. into because it's very well hidden. Yeah, it's like a, hmm. a series of fake identities all the way through. Yeah, and you were able to see that because they the DNS data. Exactly. That, right? We're Connecting looking the from the DNS. Yeah. Exactly. And then you had another one recently called Sitting Duck, although we don't have a duck here, so we have no ducks it's unfortunate. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Sitting Ducks is, um, is like a really great story for that traffic distribution system. It was joint work with another company called Eclipsium. So they partnered with us um, because what we were seeing was there was a traffic distribution system that actually was first found by Proofpoint. It's called 404 TDS. And they do a really great job of tracking this traffic distribution system and the malware associated with it. But what we did was we stepped back and said, what does the DNS look like? And we realized 404 TDS was actually hijacking domains, but we couldn't figure out like how. It was so many domains. It was 8,000 domains in the last couple of years. So with, with the Clipsium, we worked together and we're able to see, oh, they're actually taking advantage of this gap within the logic of how DNS configurations work. And then we found many more actors. But it gives you a good example of like, where you have a company that really specializes, and I and I think they're a great company. They did they're finding this, but because their specialty is in spam, that I mean that, that's what they do is threats in mail. 
they also aren't looking at this bigger infrastructure that, that we were looking at. So we complement each other in that way, um, as does a lot, a lot of people in the security stack. Yeah, and I think more and more security is becoming in more of an ecosystem play. And yeah. uh, I said, that's one thing I've always been encouraging security vendors, work with other security vendors, uh, because we all know the bad guys work together. Yeah, exactly, so you good have to. Yeah, and if the good guys keep everything in silos, that doesn't help anybody. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know, I'm curious with, uh, because uh, you've also had uh, malicious beer cat and you know things like that. Where do you get these names from? Like, uh, I I, th I believe there is a reason that you name them what you do. I'm yeah. curious as to how the naming convention comes up. So the animal is associated with the type of threat it is. So the viper in this case is for a traffic distribution system, a complex traffic distribution system. So we have Vectrio is one of the first ones we did, and now Vigorish Viper. Both of those use these HTTP based traffic distribution systems. Meerkat is male record stuff. Oh. Savvy Seahorse, Seahorse is DNS C names. So every animal is a specific kind of type of thing, and then they have unique names for their characters. Yeah. And um, so these are threats that haven't, probably not hit most companies yet, but they're certainly out there. And so if companies don't take action on this, uh, you're giving these early warnings, what's the potential impact of them? Like, why should you know, mainstream enterprises care about this. Yeah, so in fact, most cases, they actually have been hit for this for a long time. So for instance, Vectrio, Vectrio Viper, is a traffic distribution system. It's the oldest and largest known one out there. And they affiliate with over 170 cyber criminals. So what we've found is they're present in most networks. Um, and they're the single largest thing that we see. If you aren't looking at DNS as a way to control your endpoint, then you don't even know Vectrio is there, and you're just hoping to goodness that you can thwart the attack at the phishing, at the malware, et cetera, um, which means the attackers have a lot of room to maneuver. But on the other hand, when you kill the Viper, to cut our head off of the Viper, at the middle of the supply chain, which is kind of what traffic distribution is, it's a broker, you kill it there, it doesn't matter what the malware was, it doesn't matter how you got there, you're, you're stopping it right, right in the middle. So it gives you a much larger coverage okay. than you have by itself with anything else. And then what advice do you give companies on helping protect themselves against these things? Like uh, if you were to give a couple of pieces of advice to companies on how they should protect their DNS, what would you recommend? So the first things are, first control your DNS, right? No matter who you are, what you're doing, you're an individual, you're a company, you need to know who is answering your DNS, and that can actually be tricky. Yeah. So you want to know who's providing it. And then the second thing is you should always try and opt for protective DNS or DNS detection and response control DNS, which is where you can get those block lists in and get protection for your systems. Yeah, I've always thought that DNS security was one of the biggest no-brainers in all of cyber, right? If you do that well, you get rid of a lot of potential threats. And I'm always surprised that more companies don't. And I'm, uh, I don't know if you have any opinion on why that is, but it seems like this is something everybody should run. I think it comes down to, um, I've been in this field, in DNS specifically since 2017, and I'm very passionate about it. But what I've learned from talking to people is in the early days of the DNS firewalls and stuff, people were putting in uh, threat indicators from all kinds of sources. And then what happened was their network went down. So people have been burnt and they have told their stories about how they've been burnt over and over and over again. So you're like causing this ripple effect. And that is absolutely the wrong way to handle DNS security. So that is specifically why we are very focused on learning from DNS for DNS. So we're not bringing down networks and yeah. we're taking down as much as we can. But I really think it's a, you know, you've touched a hot iron once before and you got burned. And so you're afraid, you're afraid to go down it. that yeah. way, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, and just, uh, you know, one last question. As I mentioned, we are here at Black Hat. Uh, yeah. Um, what are we hoping to get out of the show? Is this something you came here to learn or what you're looking, things you're looking at? I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, what's interesting to you today? I'm here to talk to people. So one of my favorite things is, is to have people come up and want to talk about the kind of research that, that we're doing, but also learn from other people who, who are around here um, and just share experiences, really. Yeah. All right, Renee, well, uh, thanks very much. So on behalf of uh, Dr. Renee Burton from InfoBlocks, I'm Zia Scaravalli from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.